Okay, bud. So now we're just going to go through basic breakdown and operation and things of that nature. So I already told you about loading the magazine, loading the magazine into the weapon, charging the handle and stuff like that. So on this side, what we're going to do now is show you some of the other features. So no magazine in the weapon, you're going to service it. You want to pull the charging handle all the way back, reach down, push the bottom of this. It will lock that bolt in place. There's a little arm in there. You can just leave that back like that. So that locks your bolt back in place and it gives you an open bolt situation. Most ranges, when they call a ceasefire or prepare for ceasefire, they're going to say open all bolts and empty all actions. Uh, what you'll want to do is take the magazine out of the weapon, make sure there's no round in the chamber, pull the charging handle back, lock the bolt back, and then as you'll see, you have a clean, open, and safe action. You can visually inspect it like that to make sure that there's no round in the chamber. Um, and most ranges, when they go to the ceasefire and safety like that, they're going to ask you to take the magazine out of the weapon as well. Um, you can lock the bolt back with an empty magazine, and it will stay back, and then you can drop it out from there. So, um, as far as the rest of it goes, we went over the basic function as far as the safety selector. So, um, <clears throat> up is good, you're safe, and all that. So, the one thing I will show you, this is your ambi bolt release. So, now your charging handle has been back, it's charged the weapon. You put a loaded magazine into the gun. You can, instead of having to reach back with another hand on the other side, you can now take your trigger finger and you can push on this tab right here, holding the weapon, and it will release the bolt for you. So, that is that. To service the weapon, you always have to have the bolt forward. So you'll want to close that dust cover right there. Now, on your weapon, it's tuned, it's tested, it's functioned, it's ready to go, so it's a little tighter than some of the others. So I've got a little rounded punch right here. You can get a little polymer punch or a piece of wood. It's not super, super tight. But on this takedown pin right here, you just want to take it, and again, mine's rounded. You saw it just popped right through there, and then it just goes. Um, use something non-metal, non-marring. Use something wooden or plastic. Take one of the kids' Nerf toys or something and just poke through there. That pin will come all the way out that way. You have another pin at the front of the weapon. This one you can push out with your finger, and then you can get to here, and you can pull it out with your hands there. Hold the weapon together, because at this point it will come apart in two. I know how to do it like this, so when you do it, it's on the ground like this. You have both pins out. You'll want to hold this. Now you're going to want to just start separating the weapon, and the pins are tight, and it will come apart this way, okay? This is your lower receiver. This is your upper receiver, okay? Charging handle. Pull back slightly, pulling the latch to open it. When you get it to about here, switch, take your bolt out. Charging handle will just want to fall out. Very dirty and very messy. Don't do it on the kitchen table because I don't want to get the email. Okay, so now your bolt is out of the weapon. You can see this is your upper receiver, your barrel assembly, your chamber is down in there. You can see just from the test functioning, I'm sending this to you this way because I want you to take the weapon apart, visually inspect it, because this is how it should be serviced as far as the amount of lubrication and oil, what you see in here. And this has about 40, 30, 40 rounds through it. So it's, it's nowhere near time to clean it yet, but this is how it should look as far as lubrication and service. There's really nothing you need to do in here until you get a chamber cleaning kit from Walmart from um, from Walmart or from um, Gander Mountain or stuff like that. This is a 30 caliber 308 kit. It's a 16 inch barrel, so you're going to need something with about a 30 inch cleaning rod. Um, you're going to want to use a nylon brush and a brass brush, dry patches, and that's it. Okay, no stainless steel brushes, no hardened steel brushes. Nylon first with some scrubber, followed by brass with some solvent and then run patches through it until you clean it out and I can help you with that down the road if you need be. So that's pretty much it on the upper receiver. Um, you can just push the patches right through the, the compensator and run everything through there. You don't have to worry about taking that off when you clean it. Uh, now to put this back together, what you're going to want to do is hold this upside down. Do not use your scope for a table um, block. You're going to want to take this first and as you look down in here there's a little notch and two little tabs. You can see the tabs on the side of the charging handle. It's going to go in, and then it's going to physically go down into that slot, and that's the slot that it wants to ride back and forth in. You need to have this about two-thirds of the way out, 
and then you'll have your bolt. Sometimes your bolt will look like that, with this cogged in, compressed towards the body. All you want to do is go like that. The bolt will extend. The bolt must be extended. The reason being is there's a cam in the front of that bolt. When I push this down, the cam goes to the side of the bolt. I know you can see that right on there. So once you get to the point where you go like that and you stand it up and the bolt falls down on its own, call me and we'll talk about some maintenance. The gas key goes in this little channel right here in the charging handle, slides right there. That's got to be all the way forward, like I said. And then just push the two of them together and it locks open. Easy peasy. That is your upper receivers. The lower receiver is even easier because there's even less to do in here. Um, the only service that you're going to want to do in here, and this is fairly far down the road for you, is <clears throat> take some compressed air from your computer desk um, lightly and just blow through here and blow through the trigger housing. Don't blow a huge shot of compressed air anywhere down in there because you don't want to get dirt and carbon and gunk forced into some place where it shouldn't be. Now, the one thing that you will see as you look down in here in this trigger, on the left and right sides of the trigger, there are two recessed threaded holes. There are two small Allen screws in there. The socket, uh, the, excuse me, the Allen wrench that you have with the kit fits those two. Underneath this trigger, there's a small little stainless steel plate. Um, if you ever, ever, ever run into a situation where you pull the trigger and it fires two rounds, it's because those two screws might have backed out. Um, every two or three times you clean the gun, take that little Allen wrench and just double check those screws and they should be nice and torqued tight. Just get them as tight as you can comfortably by hand. Okay. Major, major, major important issue on these weapons. Okay. Everyone likes to dry fire, click bang, click bang, click bang, and dry fire. Do not dry fire these weapons. These weapons are not meant to be dry fired, and here's why. So, you've got your bolt stop release. So you've got a, you've got a relief cut in that metal there, and it's a very thin wall, maybe a hundred thousandths, maybe. I don't recall the dimensional change. So you've got a piece of steel between a gap with two pieces of aluminum, okay? And then you've got a hardened steel hammer, okay? When you release this trigger, that hammer will come all the way forward. It will make this move. You can see the trigger moving. And it will cause the bottom side of this hammer to hit this shelf on that wall and could potentially crack. I have seen them broken in the past from guys dry firing. So just a mental note, you don't need to dry fire this weapon. Again, you've got a phenomenal trigger. That velocity trigger is awesome. You're going to love it. And the only maintenance you're ever going to need to do on this, and it's messy and it's super clean now, but I'm just going to show you is you take a small little punch or something. You push down on your buffer recoil spring, and there's a little detent right here. It's got a little tit on it. And all you do is just push that plunger down, and then... It will come past the first stage, and then it's shouldered with an angle, and you would pull this out. And then you would just unwile that coiled spring over that little tit in the detent, wipe the spring off, take something down in there, paper towel on a little stick, don't get anything stuck down in there, you can't get out. Um, clean that out, and then re-lube it with a little bit of white lithium grease, chili hitch grease, axle grease, something that you use on the boy's bike chain or something like that. And you'll see again how it's serviced then. Once you put the spring back in there, um, one thing you'll notice is on here, there are a couple flats on the end of it. So you just push it down into there. Just give her a push down, spin it till you find one of those oriented flats down in there so it's captured back behind that. And that is your recoil system. So when that bolt, when the weapon fires, the bolt comes back and physically travels and pushes this weight back into this it slows it down and it slams it back forward home. Just so you can see down here in the trigger block, okay, your weapon is on fire right now. So there's a little part in there that's got a little notch in it that rolls. When it rolls to safety right there, it does not allow the trigger to move at all. 
And then once it goes to fire, that block opens up and it allows the trigger to move just a hair to engage for you. So that is how your safety works. And that is it, my friend. So we're going to put it back together now. Okay, you've got your upper receiver here. I like to put it with the pins up so it's not laying on the finish. Okay, so now I've got this. I like to take it. It's always easier. Close that. Okay, it's always easier. Make sure your pins are all the way through. To do the front first. So you do the front and you've got all that motion and you get it in there and then you can take put your bipod down and sometimes just sometimes you have to push on the bolt just to make sure it's all the way up in there push down and then you're going to want to take push this pin and you see it went right with my finger and actually this one's coming out now okay it broke in through the first initial firings so you're good now you might not need a, a, a plunger at all but other than that after you get it back together you just want to go back through a couple times make sure it's good make sure everything functions do not dry fire it make sure that the safety block rolls though that's important <clears throat> and you're good to go so we're going to box it up um, we've got both cases all the stuff to go with it we're going to send it to Oso Sports Club, so once I get the tracking information, I will um, cut and paste it and text it over to you, and if we send it priority today, uh, it should get to Oso by Saturday, hopefully, maybe Monday at the latest. Um, that's it, cuz. Hope all is well, and I'll talk to you soon. Good stop. Thanks, sir. Okie doke. Well, let's see what happens.